Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to take some glass containers that are destined for the recycling bin and give them a fun new look as little floral containers for your home. So I've got a spice jar, I've got an old salt shaker, and I've even got this old olive container. So you could use anything you wanted, like a pickle jar, any different shape glass container. This is going to be such a fun and versatile project. So you're also going to need some coffee filters. I've got these in like a natural color. You could use them in white because we're going to end up painting them or you could use tissue paper. To attach these coffee filters, you can use either Mod Podge in matte or like a school glue. Either one of those would be great because you want this glue to be thin and you want the paper to be thin. So that, that combo is going to work out real well. So I went into this whole technique in more depth in my olive oil transformation video, which I will link in the description so you can see a little more detail of how to do this technique. But it's pretty simple. You're just going to take your coffee filters and tear them into pieces or your tissue paper if you're using tissue paper and not even precise pieces, but you're just going to take them, apply some glue to your container and just start forming your paper to this shape of your container. That's why it's really important to use a thin paper because you want it to be able to grip and mold very easily, especially if your container has a lot of curves or edges where it's not real smooth. So you don't have to be precise, but in this case, I am covering the glass completely. In other videos that I've done, I haven't always covered the glass. In this case, you do want to cover the glass completely with whatever paper you're using. So you're just tearing off any excess, you're working around the top. And again, it, you wanna make sure there's no exposed glass as you're working through this. So I'm gonna real quickly show you this. In this instance, I didn't take the label off of this jar at all. I'm just going to go over with an extra layer of my coffee filters and you're not going to be able to see through one because I'm going to do the extra layer and two because we're going to end up painting these. So as you can see, I've got my layer on top. You won't even be able to tell, but I didn't want to take any chances of that label possibly showing through since the label itself was pretty dark. So. I've got all my pieces and I started looking at this little salt shaker and I decided I didn't want to paint it, but I am going to paint the others with my chalk paint and sandstorm. And that's truly my favorite neutral chalk paint. So you do want to give everything a good coat and you can see towards the top of my little spice container here, my little spice jar, I did not totally take that paper all the way to the top. And it's not going to matter, and you'll see why a little bit later in the video, but I am going over everything real well with my paint because I don't really want the color of this coffee filter to show through. That's why it's important to use a neutral color paper when you're working with this. But it's totally fine to see the texture of the paper. You just don't want to necessarily see the color. And yeah, of course, I am going to paint the bottom because I do like to pay attention to these little details like that. So that's what you're going to do. I'm not painting my salt shaker. You'll see why in just a sec. So there's my little salt shaker. I just, for some reason, really like the color, but I ended up doing two coats on this jar, just so you know. And I want to show you guys. So I've got all these little pieces of lace in my stash. Some are vintage, some are cool, but you can use anything from the thrift store. Pieces of fabric, tablecloths, someone gave me this little crochet dress that I'm never going to use. I don't even know what it was for. Um, but you could really use anything, even something like this doily, which really can't be used as a doily because it's actually got some damage in it. So you're not going to be able to use it for its intended purpose, but we are going to be able to use it in this way. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing here is just deciding what shape I want to put on each jar. And this is where you could have a lot of fun with this and be very creative. Because again, you could take something like a tablecloth that you could find at a thrift store and cut it into all different sections and show off different floral patterns and designs that you wouldn't normally be able to see and capture all that detail by just cutting out selected little sections. 
And again, you'll end up seeing the all the different details in the lace and all the different shapes and you can combine everything together. So even like with this little dress, I started looking at it and I thought, well, this is kind of fun. I'm going to cut this into little strips. So you can have a lot of fun and be creative with this and just use different, different shapes on different size containers. So I've got everything laid out kind of the way that I want it. And that'll help you get some practice as well before we make any permanent moves. You decide what you want. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take my glue gun and just very lightly tack the lace on. You don't want to use a lot of glue when you're attaching your lace because we'll give it a permanent hole later. But you're just kind of tacking it in place so you can see where it's going to end up. You won't have to end up holding the lace the whole time that you're doing the next step, but just go in real lightly with your glue gun and just tack it down. And that's also, it gives you another opportunity to make sure you're, you're really happy with the real placement of the lace, as well as if it's gonna cover the container completely or you're gonna leave some space. So I've got this guy and he's wrapped all the way around. And then the next thing I have is my little salt shaker and I ended up cutting this dress into these cute little strips. And I thought I'd just attach one on each side of this salt shaker with the, with the wider edge up at the top. So I thought that would give it a really pretty look. And so I'm just gonna tack these on all four of the sides. And it's a little bit long, but that's okay because I can end up trimming the ends to make it fit correctly. But that's where you can have a lot of fun and really be creative with the type of container you're using as well as the type of lace. This was just such a fun little project and really I started thinking this is so boho and just like really trendy right now without even realizing it. So my next challenge came with these two pieces that I was wanted to wrap around this. So as you can see the middle of this piece of lace has a bunch of holes and I just want to lightly tack this down before I permanently glue it down. So I ended up having to go in with my glue gun at the edge of the tape section of this lace and just kind of tack it down. So just, you know, be careful as you're working. Definitely be careful with your hot glue gun because you, you can burn your fingers at this point. I don't think I have any feeling left in my fingertips because I've been using my glue gun for a solid two decades easily. So I don't even think I have fingerprints anymore, you guys. So I've got this glued down here. And my next piece, this is where I said you could have a lot of fun and be creative with different placement because I'm going to kind of wrap this around and make it have a fun little leaf floral effect wrapping around the edge of this. And I just think this is such a sweet little detail on this lace and I wanted to give it a beautiful new life because it was just, you know, sitting in my stash and now people will get to see it. So once you've got everything tacked on here and you can see just lightly tacked on with the glue gun, we're going to give it a permanent hold in just a second here, but that's what we've got here. They're so sweet. So now we're ready for the next step. So I'm going to go back to my school glue, but I'm also going to use this tight bond, quick and thick multi-surface glue. And I'm going to blend the two together because the school glue is too thin. The thick glue is too thick, but when you blend them together, they're going to end up being the perfect consistency. So I've just got it on my little lid there, my little lid palette that I always use and blend them together and you'll end up seeing as I start painting over the lace with the glue. That's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take our glue, once we have it blended together, and just go over the top of the lace. And you don't wanna pull too hard because you'll end up shifting the lace a little bit, but if you do, you still have a little bit of grace and you can move it. But especially after you cut lace, you can end up seeing some little stray threads and I definitely had that on this piece where I had to go back and pull a couple of them off of my wet glue but what you will see here as I work around the edge of this I'm using a lot of glue because that's how you're going to end up holding these 
lace pieces onto your glass and making it look like it is a permanent piece that is permanently attached to these jars. So what you'll see me do right here is if I start swiping too hard, you'll see me move the lace and that's why you wanna be really careful, but you have a little bit of you know, wiggle room as you're working with this glue mixture. So I've got all, I've got those two done. Now I've got this guy. And remember, the more glue, the better. Yes, it's gonna take a long time to dry, but it's gonna be well worth it. You wanna make sure and cover those edges really, really well in the glue. That's the most important thing because you want it to look like it's truly a part of that jar, just adding some really, really cool texture. And so that's what I'm keep keep going here, you guys. And so now I've got my containers and I'm gonna give it just a little bit more flair and add some twine to the top. So I've already done my salt shaker. And when I do something like this and add twine to the top of a jar, I just put one little dab of glue and I wrap it around a couple times and then I end up adding another little dab of glue. You don't have to add a ton of glue when you're wrapping, but you want to secure it just in case, you know, as things get moved, your, your little twine doesn't come off. So you're just going to have that wrapped around the top and I figured all three of them so they look like a little matching set. So that's what I'm going to end up doing is all three of these containers. So I've got them all wrapped up and just finish off when I'm, when I'm to the end, I wanna make sure that I hold it down real well with some glue. And I'm gonna wrap this guy as well. You don't have to do this step, I just think it hides a little bit of the fact that it was a jar. But if you don't mind that rusty look, there's nothing wrong with it. You could leave it as a jar on the top. So that's what I've got. Got my guys there covered in the twine and now I want to show you guys a cool technique. So at the end of every season, you'll find this is like a summer bush from Michael's. You'll find what I call like neutral <laughs> florals. And what I mean by that is I looked and I realized that I could pull the yellow flowers off of this greenery and it would end up looking just like regular greenery. There's no more summer look. So I figured that's a great trick you guys can use when it's the end of the season and a lot of the florals on super sale at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or any of the places you like to go to buy your floral. So that's a little trick for you. And another thing that I do when I buy like a bush of greenery like this is I always cut the stems off completely. And this way I can cut them at different heights it ends up making my containers look more natural. When you're using a faux greenery, you want it to look as natural as possible. So one thing I've found is cutting them apart, kind of bending the greenery to give it that more natural look and cutting, combining them with other things too. But as you can see, I'm cutting this little guy so he's a little shorter in the front there. So that's this section. I'm gonna show you another one. This one came from Dollar Tree and it has these little lavender flowers in the top. So I'm just pulling all of those off completely. And then they're gone and now we have just these pieces of greenery. So I was trying to figure out if I could push these to the top, could I hide the bare pieces at the top? I realized I probably couldn't, but I wanted to go ahead and cut them off of the main stem again so I have different heights and you'll see what I do next once I get these this little area cleaned up you'll see what I'm going to end up doing get these little purple flowers out of the way so you guys can see what's going on here so I realized that I could stack pieces of this greenery together so I pulled one off and basically built my own <laughs> little section of a greenery bush here and that's what I'm doing so I, each one has a full each stem has a fuller look now and it'll look more natural when I have it in the container so you're kind of creating your own little custom custom size here and once I put it in there I realized okay this is gonna work so I realized that I needed to shorten it up a bit so that's what I have here. And 
Now I have all of my guys dressed up with greenery and they look so fun. I'm gonna show you guys how I styled them now. So I've got them in this little silver tray and I think they turned out so sweet. Again, you could customize this with any color floral you want any time of year. I think they'd be beautiful at Christmas if you're going for like more of a neutral Christmas look. Spring, Valentine's Day. I just think they turned out so fun. Thank you guys so much for watching.